All righty, all righty. Hopefully the internet's gonna hold on today. It's like my shirt. <laughs> I'll show you in a second. Um, just got off a client call. My clients are freaking rock stars. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Client coaching call. This guy is crushing it. And uh, man, they're the coolest. Anyways, my shirt says something awesome about diabetes. Starting to lose my voice a little bit. Check us out. Can you guys read that? The world could use a few less pricks. I know, it's awesome. All right, guys. It has been a fun month. National Diabetes Awareness Month. Whew, we got a lot going on. Some cool stuff being launched. Got some uh, companies doing some pretty sweet, like, advocate work, making diabetes known around the world, making the blue circle known around the world. Just putting out the, uh, the message that diabetes is real. It kind of sucks, but we're fighting for a cure. You know, still waiting on it, but the new tech that's coming out, some really exciting stuff happening there. Speaking of tech, though, I had a bit of an unfortunate run-in with high blood sugars a couple days ago. I don't know if you guys are aware, if you saw my story or my post about it, but holy cow, it was so dumb. I'm going to grab my, my fidget pen. Am I a fidgeter if I always play with the pen? Maybe. Maybe, just maybe I'm a fidgeter. <laughs> I found this like when we were moving and I was like, you know what, I'm going to bring it to LA. And yes, this is a fidget spinner. And yes, it is. Check it out. It's Batman. My wife got it for me like years ago as a joke. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to play with it. <laughs> I ended up like just walking around the house spinning it. It's ridiculous, but maybe I am a fidgeter. Anyways, a couple days ago, had some messy blood sugars. You guys, it was not cool. So I'm on an insulin pump, right? Insulin pumps are amazing. They give you the ability to customize all these different settings for your basals, to your bolus rates, to different times in the, in the day, or to match up with your Dawn phenomenon. It makes it easier to travel with. But sometimes, every, it's very rare, but sometimes something happens. And you're like, gosh dang it. Why does technology never work perfect all the time? Why can't technology just always work? For example, my phone has been super glitchy recently. Why can't technology work? So a couple days ago, I changed my site in the morning. Totally normal. I was meant to change it, right? A couple hours later, I noticed my blood sugar to climb a little bit. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym right now. I'm going to set work aside, go to the gym, go for a run. Runs always drop me. I've got some insulin on board. This is going to be great, okay? I'm going to drop it just a little bit, get back in range. So about halfway through my run, I noticed it hasn't budged yet. I'm like, why are my blood sugars not dropping? My blood sugars always drop when I run, especially with insulin on board. This is kind of frustrating. And uh, keep in mind, I'm sitting at like 180. So I'm like, you know, not the worst, but I'm, I'd rather not be that high. I'm going to try to get a little bit lower. And uh, usually I start with runs. I go into a workout with weights. It's like, you know what? Nothing's working. My blood sugars are staying the same. I'm going to double up. So I ran twice as much as I normally do. At the end of my run, I finally... Finally, see my blood sugar start to creep down. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I'm starting to feel sick, starting to feel frustrated. My blood sugar is just not cooperating. You've all been there, I'm sure. Where you're looking at your Dexcom or your Freestyle Libre, or maybe it's just your finger sticks, right? And you're looking at it like, why aren't my blood sugars doing what they're supposed to do? Like, set aside what I want them to do. This is what they're supposed to do. Why are they not obeying? Why are they not uh, just being nice, you know? Every once in a while, blood sugars just want to fight back. So uh, finally, I double my run, and it feels good. It feels good to run, get a nice sweat going. Blood sugar start cruising down. I'm starting to feel a little bit of victory inside. I feel like I got hope. I guess back to normal. It was a small little hump that I just had to get over, and okay, we're back to normal. I go into lifting. I kid you not, 10, maybe 15 minutes into my lifting workout, blood sugar stabilize and start creeping back up. It's like, gosh dang it, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I have this? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go into abs, do an ab circuit, steady state, keep my heart rate elevated. It's going to be good. You know, get some core workout and hopefully at least stop the rise, maybe even bring it back down a little bit. I like to change my workouts up with my blood sugars to help them 
do what I want them to do, right? And there's specific types of workouts that will help blood sugars do certain things, especially in certain orders. And it, there is, in my opinion, and from everything that I've seen and studied, there is a right way for type one diabetics to exercise. We won't get into that right now. Five minutes into my ab workout, I see my blood sugar is going over 200. Keep in mind, I started at 180, right? They went down, now they're going back up, 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 over 200. I'm like, what is going on? I'm still exercising. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's like, you know what? I'm going to look at my site. My new site that I put in maybe two hours ago. Lift up my shirt. It's on my, like, my left love handle, right? And it's like half pulled out. Not even pulled out. It's like falling off. I'm like, are you kidding me? Gosh dang it. Okay. You know what? The needle looks like it's still in. So what do I do? I jam it back in. I'm like, I'm going to finish this workout. <laughs> so I jam it back into me. I do another set. I look down, lift my shirt up again. Sure enough, it's hanging out again. The needle's still kind of in. I jam it right back in there. I got to finish my workout. Last set. Do another set of abs. I look down. I see droplets hanging out on my skin. I'm like, oh, don't you dare. That better not be insulin. I'm like in my head, I'm like, just please, God, let that be sweat. Like, I know sweat doesn't look like that. That's probably insulin, but please don't be insulin. I need the insulin to be inside of me. <sighs> I need this to bring my blood sugar down. It's just, I'm sick of this. Ultimately, I jam it back in in just hopes that that's going to fix it. But I see I'm over 200 now. I'm at 209. I'm like, you know what? Something's wrong, right? Maybe it's the insulin. Maybe it's the site that's halfway out. Maybe something's just weird today, but I got to call it quits. So I head home. I, uh, I, I called Tandem, actually, because they are awesome. Tandem is the coolest. On the phone, they're like, what happened? Okay, that's, that's a bummer. Uh, we'll send you a new set. Go ahead and change it out. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to change it. I change my site, right? I put a new one in. I give a correction dose for that whole high blood sugar. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to finish my workout here. Exercise plus insulin. I'm going to take care of this right now. I started doing jumping jacks and doing some kickboxing at home. I do some push-ups some just kind of jogs around the apartment <laughs> doing whatever I can to get this blood sugar down because I want to get back in range. I'm starting to feel a little bit nasty, you know, feeling all gross. And uh, give my correction. What else helps, helps blood sugars drop? We got the insulin, obviously a key factor. We got the exercise, definitely helps. Hot shower. Hot shower in most cases will help lower blood sugars if you have insulin on board. Reason being, hot showers equals vasodilation. More room for the insulin to circulate through your body. So I'm like, all right, insulin, exercise, hot shower. I'm gonna fix this right now, right? I'm all pumped up, but feeling great because I just got my little exercise in, finished my workout, go take a shower, come back downstairs, and I'm just staring at my Dexcom, right? Like, when's it gonna happen? When am I gonna see my blood sugars drop? Come on, baby. Starts going down, 207, 202, 205, 206. What? Are you kidding me? Starts going back up, and it stabilizes at 220. I'm like, this is not cool. This is, oh, that's how it's going to be today, huh? Is it really diabetes? Okay, well, I'm going to fix this. So I sit there. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's because I missed out on some basil, right? It was two hours when I was at the gym, and I didn't have, it wasn't two hours at the gym. Two hours where I had that new site where maybe I wasn't getting basil that whole time either. So maybe that correction served as my basil, right? It's my crazy brain being just obsessive and just analyzing every single possible scenario. That's what my brain does. That's what makes me such a great coach. But sometimes it's a little bit much for me. So anyways, I'm analyzing every single little thing. And I'm like, okay, I missed basil potentially. Maybe it was that correction could have caused... The, uh, the basil to match up, and now I'm just stuck at 220, which means if I give a bolus right now for my lunch, I should be on target. I've had this pump site in for an hour and a half now, which means that basil is going to be catching up. I'm going to give a bolus. I'm going to eat, but I'm going to eat slowly. I'm going to watch my blood sugars and see what happens, okay? Give my bolus. Pre-bolus. Nice long pre-bolus, right? 20, 25, maybe even 30 minutes. Sitting there like, okay, this should work. It hasn't worked yet. Still watching my blood sugars. Nothing's going on. I'm going to take my first bite because I have a feeling that I'm just going to plummet, right? Like that's what happens when you pre bowl us too long. It's like, all right, one bite. Starts to go up. What? Two bite. Goes back down. Three bite. Stabilizes. I get to the point where I finished half of my meal and I'm still stable. 
And then I see the terrible slanted up arrow. It slants up 220, 225, 226, 230, 240, 250. I'm like, oh no, I ate half my lunch. I've got something like eight or nine units on board and it just doesn't seem to be working. I'm cruising upwards now. Like I haven't been below 200 in hours. I'm starting to feel sick. I, I dropped the rest of my lunch. I'm like, I'm doing laps, right? I gotta activate that insulin. So I go outside, I go for a walk for an hour. It stayed stable. And the second I stopped walking, creeping back up again, diabetes wants to mess with me. Super not fun. I come back in and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, my wife happened to text me. She's like, I am on my way home. And I was like, okay, cool. Here's my day. And I just blah, like word vomited all over her. It was like, my day sucks. I had all these blood sugar things. And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to give myself an intramuscular shot. I am shot, right? Like I haven't given myself a shot in almost two years because I've been on an insulin pump for that whole time. Like it's been super cool being able to be on an insulin pump. It's changed my life. But I was like, you know what? I am shot is necessary. I'll show you guys what I got here. I actually just ordered these like a month ago. So I got lucky. Syringe. What? I know. I haven't used a syringe or even seen one in forever. In fact, it had been so long that I took a look at it and I was like, wait a second. What line is one unit? There's a bunch of different lines here. I haven't used this in so long. The design has changed on the syringe. I haven't used this in like five or six years because I moved to the insulin pen, right? So I'm looking at this like, crap, am I going to give one unit or is it going to be 10 units? Like I got to make sure I give the right dosage because it's an IM shot, which means it goes super fast, right? If you do it correctly. Now to give you guys an example, if you want to give an IM shot, you talk to your doctor first. That's the first step. Okay. Understand how they work. IM shots work a lot faster and they have a, a quicker tail end as well, which means they stop working faster than normal. It all gets absorbed. Anyways, you go into your shoulder, right into the muscle. You want it to get in the muscle. Shout out Dexcom. Anyways, I go ahead. I give the full correction, intramuscular. Bam, in my shoulder. What happens? I wait five minutes. I wait 10 minutes. I wait 15 minutes. What's going on? I wait 20 minutes. Oh, and it's dropping. It's coming down. Oh, it's coming down fast. Oh, oh boy, it's dropping quickly. This, okay, okay. This is working. I'm glad to see this, but I got to keep an eye on it and make sure I don't drop too far. Drop down 274, 265, 250. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Go, go, go. We're going to make it. 230, 228, 230, 224. I'm like, nah, -uh. what is going on right now? Turns out the new needles you get, I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, if I put it right there, maybe. The, uh, the needle itself is a lot shorter than they used to be. When I first got diagnosed, that needle was like three times that length. But now, obviously, shorter needle, they don't want you to get hurt and bleed as much. Smart, but not ideal for an IM shot because you want it to get into the muscle. So it turns out I didn't quite give myself an IM shot. Uh, maybe half of it got in there, but I must have taken it out too early or something. But unfortunately... It brought me down to about 209. Sat there and was like, okay, clearly my insulin works. Something's wrong with both of those site changes. Maybe I have localized insulin resistance, some lipohypertrophy, build up some scar tissue, right? There's something going on in that area. I know this side works. I'm going to go back to that side and do my third site change of the day. That's four total sites in one day. That's the most I've ever done. That's a new record for me. Three site changes. I'm like, you know what? I got to keep trying. I'm not going to let diabetes win today. So I go back to my right side, put it in. I'm like, all right, I'm at 206 right now. Stable. Let's make this work. I give my dinner bolus. I sit there for 30 minutes. I'm like, I will not take my first bite until my Dexcom shows at the very least a slanted arrow down. I'm like, okay, this, this needs to work. I, I can't eat dinner because I'm going to shoot back over 300 again if this happens, right? 30 minutes hits, slant it down. Is it going to work? I have my new sight, my third sight of the day. 35 minutes hits, arrow down. Woo, it's working. It's totally working. 
And the next one is like 40 minutes in, double arrows down. I'm like, okay, shoot, I got to I gotta eat my food. I got to start eating. <laughs> Anyways, I drew out my meal. I made sure to eat slowly, right? Because I don't want to eat it all really fast and then spike back up to 250 or something silly. So I took my first bite, finished. I sectioned out my meal so I had proper timing in between each different section of my meal. It's a strategy that I use. And you know what happened? Double arrows down, double arrows down, double arrows down. My wife's looking at me like, are you okay? Are you, uh, you going to do something about that? <laughs> and I'm like, I got this. I got this. I want this to happen. I want to get back into range. You know what? I almost want to dip a little bit low just to make sure this insulin is going to work for me. So I'm watching it. But I'm like, I obviously don't want to plan to go low. But I'm like, you know what? I want to balance this out. I don't want to shoot back up. So I'm going to eat slowly. I get down. Double arrow down, double arrow down, double arrow down, single arrow down, single arrow down, slanted arrow, stable arrow at 119. And I stayed at 119 for the rest of the night. Whew! Big sigh of relief. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how happy I was to see that. I spent eight hours over 200, two of those hours over 300. Could not get my blood sugars down. Multiple sight changes. And I, I realized something, that during that time, I was in communication with my wife, right? And she is amazing. She's not a diabetic, but she's there for me. She knows that I'm a verbal processor. I like to talk things out. And when I'm having my obsessive moments of analyzing and breaking down what could have been the cause of this and what steps can I take to fix this, right? She's there to listen to me. And she's great at that. She helps me get to my conclusion when I'm like, okay, insulin's not bad, check. The site could be bad, but it doesn't seem to be because it went in properly. Check. Uh, localized insulin resistance, maybe. Let's switch this over. And she's listening to me, right? But here's the thing. I realized, as amazing as she is, and amazing as all of your supporters and loved ones and friends are who don't have diabetes, they will never fully understand, right? They'll never fully understand the frustrations you go through. They won't fully understand the nausea that you feel when you have those high blood sugars, the frustration of blood sugars that won't come down, that won't cooperate and do what they're supposed to do, even though you think you've done everything correctly, they'll never understand what's going on in your head, whether it's anxiety, panic, depression, the mental health side of diabetes, right? There's so many things, so many little small pieces that people without type 1 diabetes will never understand. And ultimately, that's okay. It's not their fault. They do what they can. They love on you. They support you. But you need people to understand you. Today, actually, which is, I didn't even plan this, but it's funny. Today, for the, uh, the National Diabetes Awareness Month, there's a challenge going on, right, where we post about a certain topic every single day. Today's topic was what? It's diabetes and diabetes. The community, the community aspect behind type 1 diabetes and how important that is. Having people that understand you, understand the struggles that you go through. And so I realized this two days ago when this happened. I was like, you know what? I got to go live in my community. And this is something that none of you guys really know about. So don't feel bad for being out of the know. But we have a private membership on Facebook. We have a community where people can bring in their struggles, their victories, their jokes. On Mondays, we post diabetic memes and they're hilarious. We have different win threads and we talk about anything and everything. I said, you know what? I'm going to go on live in that group and I'm going to talk about this. And we're going to let everybody hear about my bad day, right? I am the coach. I still have bad blood sugar days. I still have days where I'm like, what the heck happened there? I went through three site changes. Are you nuts? And it's because I have that community that I can bring this to and say, hey, guys, check out what happened. Here's what I learned, right? And I'm able to coach them on here's how you can test. And I did. I, I showed them how you can test if your insulin's bad. Here's how you know if you uh, may have localized insulin resistance, if you have lipohypertrophy, how you can get rid of scar tissue buildup. There's so many different strategies that I was able to teach them and remind them because I had this bad experience. And it's only because we all have type 1 diabetes that they're able to understand the lessons that I'm teaching. They're able to comment on each other's posts and understand that they are not alone. And that's a powerful, powerful thing. I felt alone for the first eight years having type one diabetes, I knew one girl in my elementary school that had type one, but I didn't know what it meant. This is before I had type one. I knew she carried around a bag of Skittles 
and she had uh, this mechanical thing with a tube that was connected to her all the time. That's all I knew. And then in college, I knew one guy who was on my rowing team who had type 1 diabetes. And he kind of taught me. Well, that's when I was diagnosed at 19. I was on the rowing team at San Diego State University. He taught me the basics of the ropes. He showed me it's important to take sugar around with you. And uh, it's important to test your blood sugars. It's important to do all these things. But I never had a sense of community until about two years ago. And I cannot tell you how much of a difference that has made in my life. How much of a positive difference. It's, it's given me this new perspective, new strategies that I've learned from people in the community, other leaders, right? We get to see all these new little tips and tricks that we never would have thought of had we not seen somebody else post on Instagram about it or make a YouTube video about their endocrinologist appointment and how to talk to your endo, right? And ask the right questions. All these things I never knew about until I found the diabetic online community. And then I decided to take it one step further about a year and a half later. This is about five months now that it's been going. We have our private membership community. And of course, it's more than just a community, but the community is my favorite part. You know, we throw extra workouts in there, recipes, nutrition. We do coaching calls, all this kind of stuff, and Q&As. But to me, the most valuable part of that membership is the community aspect. Being able to post in there and say, hey guys, I, my blood sugars have been at 300 all day. It sucks. Diabetes sucks today. And to have other people come in there and say, man, that does suck. Shoot, man. <laughs> Best of luck, you know, take some insulin, take care of yourself, drink some water, but I get it. And to have people in there that say, I get it. I get you, I understand what struggles you're going through. And then of course, on the other side of the coin where you can say, guys, check this out. I've been in range all week long. I have had almost perfect blood sugars for an entire week. Can you believe that? Like, oh my gosh. And everybody posts, no way. I had a great day yesterday. And someone else is like, dude, I was in range 95% for 12 hours. This is so incredible. And everyone's just bouncing off and, and really just rallying off everybody else's energy. That's something you cannot find anywhere else, right? The internet brings us together. As divisive as people say it is, the internet is a powerful tool for bringing people together. And I think it's our responsibility as leaders in the type one diabetic community to continue bringing those together, to continue tying those knots, right? In the community, making it stronger. That's what we're here for. Understand that you now have found this, but there's others out there who still don't know what's going on, right? There's people, obviously, that are in my membership, and there's people that are outside of it, likely some of you, that never even knew it existed. And so that's why I wanted to do something special, for not only for Diabetes Awareness Month, but also, yeah, I mean, you get some fun stuff coming up next week, like Black Friday, and we got some fun, fun secret stuff happening then. But something I wanted to, uh, to mention to you guys on the aspect, the side of community, right, and how important community is to all of us, is that we're gonna be opening up, very briefly, a look into our membership. It's, we have never publicly announced it and accepted everyone in. Uh, as you know, with all of my launches, I only accept a certain number of people each time. And to make sure that you are one of those people, we put up a wait list so that you can be the first to get notified and understand that we will close the doors. We always close the doors. There's always people that don't think we're actually gonna close the doors, but we do. If you are interested in that amazing community, again, it's not open yet. You, you still can't join, but there will be a, a secret little pre-launch that only people on our wait list are going to be notified of. And that wait list for this moment only can be found in two places. One place is at membership.ftfwarrior.com. And the second place, I threw a link in our bio about 20 minutes ago. And I don't know how long I'm going to leave it up, but the, the link goes to the same place at membership.ftfwarrior.com. This is not a way that you can join the membership. This is a way to get on the wait list to get in. So if you are on the same page as me looking for that community to get in with people who get it, who know your struggles, but can also offer that outside perspective, some strategies, tips, and tricks to help you better your management and lessen the stress of diabetes in your life, head over to that wait list, sign up. It's just all is your email at membership.ftfwarrior.com. Now, I want to just kind of good. I'm going to jump to the comments in here and see what you guys 
are looking at. Um, see if we have any questions. We got a ton of cool people in here. What's up? This is my community, guys. I love all of you. I love seeing you on here. We got, let's see. Ooh, we got a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm going all the way to the top. Bunch of people saying, what's up? Do, do, do. Ooh, we got a couple people from the community, from our membership in here. What's up, guys? So they know what's up. They know that this membership is dope and it's super fun to be in. And what they don't know is that they're actually getting access to uh, our next mini course program. I shouldn't even mention this because they're watching, but everybody that's in our membership currently and everybody, well, we'll see if I put something fun out. I might put something fun out to the wait list. Give you guys a little, little something extra for getting on the wait list, but we'll see. Um, everybody who's in the membership is gonna grab free access to our next mini course. And I'm really excited about that. Um, okay, my phone's a little bit slow. It says, hey, happy Thursday. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Dang, four in one day. I know, four sites in one day, three of them being site changes. That was stupid rough. Hey, John, good to see you. Hey, Kelly. Lots of, lots of highs. Insulion, what up, bro? Good to see you, man. How is New York? Yeah, it's probably freezing right now, right? Any advice on starting a foundation from Bob's Bacon? I don't know what you mean by that. Like a nonprofit? I have zero knowledge on starting a nonprofit. Uh, they're very cool, but I have no idea how to do that. Christina says, what's up? Good to see you. Um, aw, Nicole, that's so nice of you. You're such an awesome speaker. I'm just hanging out with you guys. This is the community I'm talking about, right? We're just hanging out, we're all pals. Got Whitney from Happy Pancreas saying what's up. Hey, Whitney, good to see you. I posted about you today, did you see that? For anybody who didn't check it out yet, I posted a bunch of pictures from our meetups in the past, and uh, there's some awesome people in there. Those are a lot of my diabetes, and my diabetes, my sister who's a type one diabetic, she's a rock star. She's a night shift ICU nurse, she travels the world, and her weekends are just like going to the beach to play beach volleyball and stuff. She's awesome. Um, anyways, <laughs> I'm just like a, a fanboy for my sister. She's so cool. And she's my youngest sister, so she's like showing me up, right? Traveling all the time. She was in Spain like last month for three weeks. D -d 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 -d. Larry says, there are new advances for diabetes, best squeamy and inhaled glucose for hypoglycemia, as well as new injection that doesn't require mixing called GVOC. Although I'm already talking about hyper. Yeah, so that's, I'm talking about the high blood sugars, but yes, if you're experiencing hypos, there's a ton of new tech, new solutions out there. The inhalable uh, glucon, glucagon, is that what it is? Um, and then the new pre-mixed. It's a solution that's been pre-mixed. Like I have a, a glucose pen, right? And a glucose pen, glucagon pen, and you have to actually mix it before you use it. That's not ideal because that's usually an emergency situation. You want to be able to just stab and go, right? You have a severe low blood sugar. So they decided to come up with a solution that's pre-mixed and ready to go. Like why hasn't that been invented before? That's so cool. Anyways, yeah, so Larry, thank you for that comment. It's Everyone needs to know about that stuff. Um, I don't know if anybody has gotten that yet, if they have access, but it's super cool. Michaela says, hi from Ontario. What's up? I, Canada's probably pretty cold too right now, huh? I've been to, uh, I actually did a photo shoot in Montreal in February and it was stupid cold and they had me take my shirt off and I thought I was gonna die because it was like negative something degrees. Oh my gosh, you guys deal with a lot of ridiculous temperatures. I am so sorry. I think it was like 75 today in LA, so. We, uh, we, we kind of got the good end of the deal there. <laughs> uh, Larry says, you're an amazing educator and person. Oh, thank you. Keep up the wonderful work, man. Thank you so much, Larry. Uh, education is one of my passions. I love hopping on here and helping you guys out. Um, honestly, like I jump in live once a week in that membership I was talking about, our private membership, and we just do live Q&As. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. I thoroughly enjoy being able to help people, teach people, answer questions, and uh, it's just, it blows my mind at how fun, how much fun I get to have while helping others. It, it brings purpose to my life, it's so fun. Um, 
which, okay, I want to make, mention that thing one more time before I forget. For anybody who is interested in that, the membership whole thing, you do not get a chance to sign up yet, but you get priority uh, notification when it does go live before anyone else does if you're on that wait list. So hop on the wait list. It's at membership.ftfwarrior.com or tap the link in our bio on Instagram and you'll be able to find that. And uh, okay, got some more questions. I'm starting a foundation in Houston and I'm making shirts and all the profit will be going to JDRF, but I'm not really sure how to start. Gotcha. Um, best place to start since I don't know about nonprofits or foundations would be Google in my opinion. I'm just going to say that because that's how I learn a lot of stuff when I was starting a business and, and taking that whole new path. Cause when I first started did not know hardly anything about starting a business, right? Like that was a whole new area of life. So Google it. There's a lot of good resources out there. Um, and I'm sure there's a, a blueprint somewhere where they have different ways for you to follow and different steps you can take to start that foundation. Worst case, maybe even contact JDRF and be like, hey, guys, I want to support you. But if you could help me understand how to start a foundation so that I can support you, that would be awesome. And then they might be like, cool, we'll help you set it up. I think that might be a cool route to go. So just call, call your local JDRF chapter or shoot me an email. Um, Mike can't stop. Won't stop. Love that says, can you do anything about the scar tissue from pumps for insulin resistance? Love it. Uh, stop using that site. Like honestly, if you have scar tissue and you have like uh, limited insulin absorption in that site, stop using it. Find a new way to rotate sites. We need at least six to eight insulin pump sites to avoid that. Now, a lot of people are switching between two and four, right? Because they found their favorite spots and they want to stick to it. And I get that. I've got my favorites. Unfortunately, one of my favorites is the one that did not work two days ago for me. And so I have to find new spots, right? We have to rotate. So for me, I'm going to do this real quick. I have eight spots that I use. However, recently I switched to six because two of them gave me a lot of pain. And so, um, oh boy, says thanks for all. You got it, man. Um, the spots that I use are right love handle, left love handle, right lower back, left lower back, right upper buttocks, left upper buttocks, right inner thigh, left inner thigh. Now, my inner thighs have been giving me a little bit of pain. Uh, I lost like five pounds doing a little shred, and uh, I have no fat there left, so now it just hurts <laughs> when I stick a needle in. So um, I got to find two new spots now. But, um, yeah, look and experiment with new spots whenever you get the chance because you might just find one that could be become your new favorite spot. And uh, worst case scenario, you're still finding another option so that you can minimize uh, scar tissue buildup. Now, as far as if scar tissue buildup is already a thing, the best thing you can do is give it a break. For example, I was MBI for the first eight years of my life. Did not know this is where this conversation was going, but we're going there. I used to inject myself in almost the same exact spot every single time I gave insulin, every single time. That's bad, right? Like no one told me to switch it up. Matt, I was switching it up like maybe an inch, but it was always in the same lower right quadrant of my abdomen. And unfortunately, I got some scar tissue build up there. It looks like an extra ab. It's weird and I hated it. But now it's been two years that I've been on a pump. Well, almost two years. I got one month left. But it's been almost two years. That scar tissue is almost completely gone. I'm feeling it right now. I used to be able to feel an actual lump underneath my skin of scar tissue buildup. Now it's hardly there at all. So give it a break. Try and find some new sites for your insulin pump, and that should help a lot. Um, that's my first tip. And ask your doctor. Sometimes doctors have topical creams or different things they'll, they'll recommend. But first step, give that spot a break. Diabetic Daily Pickle says, I am MDI and made that mistake. <sighs> yeah, it's rough. Uh, be cautious with that. So let's see, I'm gonna do a couple more questions and then I gotta peace out, go have uh, dinner with my wife. For anybody who wasn't here for the beginning of the live, I wanna show you my t-shirt again, cause it's that cool, check it out. The world could use a few less pricks. And it's orange, so it like draws attention, right? That's the whole point. <laughs> um, so, one more question. M Rock the Beast says, what up bro? What's up man? Oh boy says, do you have any tips for preventing nighttime highs? 
good after dinner, and then tend to rise. There's a couple things that could be, right? It could be a higher than normal uh, fat or protein meal at dinner, and you're not seeing the rise until hours later because of the delayed absorption. Um, we call it delayed gastric emptying, and that's a real thing with higher fat and high protein, specifically high fat. Uh, high protein, here's some big terms for you. Gluconeogenesis essentially means that parts of your proteins, and I'm trying not to overwhelm you guys right now, but I love, like I said, I love teaching. This is like my favorite thing to do is just to help. Uh, gluconeogenesis essentially means that protein breaks down into glucose at roughly 60%. So if you're not covering the protein you eat and you eat a high protein meal, you may see a rise in glucose four or five hours later that you were not anticipating, which in this case might be when you're already going to sleep. So you might be asleep going, sweet, I'm at 120. It's a great pre-bedtime blood sugar. I'm going to wake up and be at the same. And then you wake up at 3 in the morning and you're at 250. And you're like, seriously, what happened? That could be part of the cause. Now, of course, basal rates, where I, we actually talked about this last week in our recent program. Uh, we talked about how to basal test and discover if your basal are too high or too low, how to correct that. And um, it was a, a wonderful process for having some breakthroughs and people are having some amazing results with that. But that's something you might want to talk to your doctor about or join our membership, uh, which you can't do yet, like I mentioned, but you can sign up for the wait list in our bio. Um, but those are two things that off the top of my head we can think about is maybe it's high protein, high fat. Maybe it's uh, a need for a basal adjustment. So that's hilarious and appropriate. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to, but I think it's hilarious too. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, I wanted to share that story with you, let you know that I have bad days too, right? Like I have frustrations with blood sugars. It's not always perfect. Now, granted, most of the time I maintain a ridiculous time and range and it is pretty good, but I wanted to clarify, I am not perfect. None of the influencers on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or podcasts, none of them are perfect. Everyone has bad days, but it's how we pick ourselves up and react to that situation that defines who we are. So yes, I had a bad day. Yes, it was frustrating. Yes, I hit 300 and had to change my insulin pump site three times. But did I freak out? No. I analyzed the situation. I did what I could. I tested my insulin. I figured out that spot likely had localized insulin resistance to the scar tissue. I switched my site, I fixed it, and I moved on. So it is up to you to determine how your future pans out. It is up to you to determine how you react to what life throws at you. Okay? So, oh, 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 Larry says the shirt was hilarious and appropriate. Yes, I think so too. The world gives you a few less pricks because we deal with enough pricks already. Less pricks now, obviously, because of the, the good old Dexcom G6. Thank you, God, for that. But, um, yeah, I thought the shirt was funny, too, so I threw it on. Anyways, guys, uh, I wanted to give you that opportunity to sign up for our wait list. No one else even knows this page exists. I have not linked it up before. Uh, it is in our bio currently, or you can find that wait list for our membership at membership.ftfwarrior.com. I hope you guys have an amazing night. I wish all of you stable blood sugars, and I hope that none of you have to deal with the crap that I dealt with two days ago. And uh, that's it for me, guys. I will uh, chat with you later. I'll probably do some lives next week, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be sharing some cool stuff with you for Black Friday, so keep an eye out. All right, guys, have an awesome night, and I will speak to you guys soon. Keep up the fight.